Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. There are two ways to rig characters or objects up with bones in Anime Studio Debut. I'll show you the basics of both in this tutorial, and then you can choose which method works best for you. So to start, we'll need a basic object. If I come over here to my shape tool and grab the star, I can just get a different color here and draw a star onto the canvas. Move it down, just like that. Now, in order to create a bone structure, you need to have your vector layer in a bone layer. So let's come over here to our layers panel and click new layer and choose bone. For this, I'll name it star. And now I'll take layer one, which has the star and put it into that bone layer. So now we'll want to draw our bones on the star or bone layer. So I'll click on that bone layer and then come over here to my left toolbar and click on the Add Bone tool. Now we'll start at the top. So starting right about here, I will click and hold down my left mouse button and drag upwards. Once I've neared the top of the star, I can release and I have drawn out that bone. Next, let's create the right bone. So I'll come over here, click and drag and make that bone. Now, when working with bones, no matter which method you use, you'll want to abide by the hierarchy of bones. For instance, in this case, I want all of the bones to be controlled by this first bone. And I'll demonstrate what I mean by this in a moment. So in order to draw the next bone and link it to the first, you either need to take your select bone tool or hit your up key on your keyboard to select the first bone. You'll know when it's selected when the bone highlights in red. Now, once you've done that, come down here and draw out your third bone. Now we'll hit up again to select that first bone and draw the fourth. And one more time, hit up and draw the fifth. Now to visualize this, if I click on the Reparent Bone tool, you'll see that all of my links lead back to the first bone. Once you have set up your bones, you can take the Manipulate Bones tool and move your bones around. Now notice when I select this tool, we have these clouds that surround each bone. These are the strengths I am talking about. Whatever is included in this cloud will be affected by that particular bone. So if I click and drag with my Manipulate Bones tool on this bone, you can see that that area is affected. Same with this one, and this one, and so on. If you want to animate a bone animation out, you can simply advance forward on your timeline, and then move your bones. Now go back to your first frame, and you can see that this animation plays out. The next example is layer binding. What we'll essentially do here is connect our layers to certain bones and then animate it out. So as you can see, I've already drawn something out here. It's an arm made up of three different layers, a hand, the lower part of the arm, and the upper part of the arm. What I need to do is create a bone layer, just like before, and I'll name this arm. And now I will click on the top vector layer, hold and shift, Click on the bottom one so that I can highlight all the layers in the Layers panel and click and drag them into that bone layer. Now I can click on that bone layer, come over here to the Add Bone tool, and start down here with the lower part of the arm and add a bone, add my second bone, and the third bone. Now the next step is to connect each of these layers to a bone. 
So I'll go into my bone layer and click on the hand vector layer. Select my bind layer tool on the left toolbar and select the hand bone. You'll know when it's selected when it's highlighted in red. Next for the lower arm, I'll select the lower arm bone. And then for the upper arm. Now coming back here to my arm bone layer, I can grab the manipulate bones tool. And even though I have the strengths of the bones highlighted right now, those will not matter or have any effect on what I'm doing right now. But if you want to get rid of those, you can take your bone strength tool first, come down here to one of these bones, click and hold and move back like this to remove the strength. Now taking your manipulate bones tool, if I start with the hand and I start moving, you can see that the bones move along with it. There is definitely a hierarchy going on here because this bone's connected to that one and this one is the main one. And this is how you'll set up a character, for instance. You'll have the bones connected to each other, which then connect to a center bone in the body, which might even connect to a bone after that. And you just gotta make sure that all of your bones are consistent and connected correctly. Finally, if you're having trouble with, let's say for instance, this breaking right here with this wrist, you can add bone restrictions. So if I take my select bone tool and select that bone, come up here to the bone constraints, turn on angle constraints, you can now adjust the angle of the bone. So if we make this less, you can see now that the angle is less. And if we move this, you can see it's now restricted. And we may need to restrict that a little bit further. So let's try something even more drastic, like five. So now you can see that there's minimal movement and that there is not any breaking occurring with the arm. In the end, it's important to remember that creating bones is quite a process. It can take a lot of time to adjust and create the bone structure you need for your character or object. So play around with it, be patient, and before you know it, you'll be creating polished bone structures in Anime Studio. And that wraps up this lesson. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you next time.